What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Internet Famous. I'm your host, Devalor, and um, I still haven't seen Infinity War, but that's not relevant right now. Yeah, no, I, I still haven't seen it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, let me start off this episode by introducing my co-host, uh, a man with more funk than the bottom drawer of your refrigerator. Ladies and gentlemen, it's AKA Mike B. Like the garage refrigerator or like the in-house one? <laughs> because the garage one's pretty funny. Yeah, I, just, I didn't even think about like even looking down there until you just mentioned it. And now <laughs> I'm hoping I forget that it exists. Maybe just like just a haze just because there's nothing down there. Yeah. So, thanks. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Anytime. Uh, and joining us this week uh, is somebody that, uh, I mean, we've been playing games with for a long, long time. You've seen him around our streams. He streams himself as well. Um, he can't read a map, but he is an engineer. <laughs> it's guns! <laughs> you know, I was wondering if, like, you wanted me on the show just so you could use that intro, <laughs> or because you're finally, like, scraping the bottom of the barrel to talk to. I'm not really sure which one's worse. Um, so the answer to your question is yes. Thank you. Yes. You, 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 you forgot the, you know, maybe the Destiny thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody no, we, cares about that. We need we need somebody that actually plays that game. And we just had Shizzle on, on last show. week, and he had a picture for the for the thing, so it's easy to swap the pictures, and it is to get another webcam up. So, so <laughs> yeah. it worked out perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <sighs> so we do it's have easier to swap server X. <laughs> basically, uh, so we do have a lot of stuff to talk about here today. Uh, but to start things off, guns. How about you? Uh, how about you introduce yourself to everybody? Who the uh, fuck are you? Uh, I am an engineer. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not that bad at reading maps. Uh, it, it, it's just confusing sometimes. It's all directions and stuff. Um, I mean, you're I've defense, streamed... we, were, we were in the Destiny maze, like in that palace. And so, yes, I don't blame you. All the different crap. Yeah, I don't blame you. It was funny <laughs> because Shizzle made it rhyme and with the yeah. jingle. And that was it. That's when you knew it. He could have been anything, and you made it a jingle. Yeah, it was perfect. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've streamed on Twitch for almost five plus years now, um, and I've been vicariously creating crappy content on YouTube for like six years. <laughs> How do you vicariously create? Do you help other people create crappy content? Is that what that is? If No, if you look at my YouTube channel, there's not like a solid six months where I focus on any single bit of content. It's like, oh, this is interesting. And then I start making content about that. And mm. then it's like, I'm done with that. And I make something else afterwards. All right. So you don't know what vicarious means. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but but I mean, on, on the point of like constantly switching things up, I actually came to that realization like last night. I was like, wait, am I a variety streamer or have I just not found the game? <laughs> like, is that what I need? Because Josh, you used to be a variety streamer. Sort and... of, for like a week. Yeah, for... no, I mean, like you were kind of <laughs> switching it up like every month or every whatever, like whatever game we kind of rotated in. Is that, that of. really a variety streamer though? Or is that just someone with ADD? Like, That's what, what, I, was a, I was a WoW what streamer. Really what really is? What really is a, 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 a variety streamer? So, okay. <laughs> I was a, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. So I was a WoW okay. streamer for the longest time, obviously. Sure. Then yeah, I was a WoW reason. slash League of Legends streamer because reasons. I wanted to play League mm -hmm. of Legends. Mm -hmm. Ew. Then I was a WoW streamer again because I got tired of League of Legends. Then I was not a streamer <laughs> for a while. You were, no, I thought you were streaming some other bullshit for a while. Like, I, you know, I streamed you like doing, SWOTOR. You were, PUBG, you were doing like SWOTOR. Like, yeah, you yeah. Were doing, like recently, yeah. so more recently, like last year, I was doing WoW primarily for a while. And then I was doing PUBG primarily for a while. Right, yeah. And then I was doing Destiny primarily for a little while. And then I got into GTA and now I'm a GTA streamer. Mm-hmm. 
So that I don't, I don't think much all she wrote. I don't think what's, I ever qualify for, as a, a variety streamer. So what's the window? I don't know. Like um, to me, a variety streamer is someone who switches it up almost every stream, or at least like you're not playing the same game twice in one week. Or not. Sorry, saying that the wrong way around. You're not playing the same game for more than a week. Would be. Oh my, yeah. Okay. That's me. The way that I. Would I wouldn't. It. I mean, I wouldn't say that's true. Like you know, some like like Ko is playing uh, Pillars of Eternity, and it took him like more than a week to go through that game. Well, there's entirely. gonna be instances like that, like Subnautica. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I typically don't play a game for longer than a week, anyways, unless I'm going back to something else previously or whatever. And like Subnautica was one that took over a week, but everybody was really kind of engrossed in that, which thank God because I was fully into it. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I so think to out. me, to me, a variety streamer can occasionally get really hooked on a game and they'll play that for longer than normal but it's more about like what's the average how long do you play a yeah, game totally. on average um <laughs> olivia why are you just trolling my chat right now talking about our fridge just because i see so in the intro is I that said, why the good I, I said the bottom of your fridge not the bottom of my fridge bottom of my fridge is great bottom of your fridge you that's the problem is the bottom of we your fridge that- great though we had we had that happen. I don't think if, I've actually uh, looked in there in like months. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fridge go uh, lose power in our garage once, and we didn't know about it for like three days. That was a scary. How thing. did how did you did you discover by the smell? Yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. That's how we discovered we could smell it through the refrigerator. Whoa. Three days sealed. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. All of your frozen shit would be gone for sure. Yeah, in the middle of July too. So. In the middle of July. In what state do you live in? Uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. Oh man, everything yeah. sucks out there. So yeah. 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 The winter sucks. <laughs> the summer sucks. Yeah. The spring. The everything. It just yeah. sucks. The wind. There's no sucks. good points. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty mile an hour winds suck. Yeah, that's great. Man. We also get rattlesnakes and black widows and brown recluse. We just get everything. It sucks. Is like wow, it's the melting pot of everything. It's like Americans country. Australia. <laughs> yeah i'll take that <laughs> all right so um all that aside <laughs> i guess uh we do actually have a lot of a lot of topics that we i want to get into here today um more than we will probably have time for which is cool um the first one that i want to touch on is um walmart uh, which by the way also sucks just while we're talking about things that sucks yeah. It's like the Kentucky of retail stores. <laughs> it's the Kentucky of retail stores. <laughs> um, That's a living comparison now. <laughs> yeah. Walmart on their website, Walmart Canada specifically. So not Walmart Kentucky, Walmart Canada. <laughs> Walmart Kentucky. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. They, they probably have to, they, they have to have a special version of Walmart for Kentucky because the regular <laughs> Walmart is too high class. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we have nice things out here. Okay. I saw a four door car like once. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so Walmart Canada um, accidentally, we think, posted, a, well, obviously, accidentally posted a whole bunch of retail listings that um, are, uh, we're thinking they're probably, and most, most people are thinking they're probably some sort of um, accidental leak of some E3 stuff. Um, so if I go ahead and pull up the screenshot, which we're getting here from Polygon, um, take a look at this here. Uh, don't worry about the prices. Remember Canadian dollars is Walmart Canada that we're talking about. Look at the names. So Super Smash Brothers Switch. We knew that was coming already. Mm -hmm. Um, Borderlands 3. That's interesting. And Assassin's Creed on Xbox One. That's interesting. I don't know what Destiny Comet is. I'm ass- I'm assuming it's not a Destiny spinoff, but just something called Destiny Comet. Um, well, so Comet was PS. the major. Was that? Yeah, Comet, Comet, Comet's the major. Like uh, the Taken King was called Comet before it was the Taken King. Ooh. So that's that's probably Destiny 2's... Conf- I mean, everybody knew it was coming anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here that we we kind of already knew was coming. Um, but some of the things specifically that they call out um, is there's a new Splinter Cell that was listed somewhere. Um, it wasn't actually in that screenshot, but they did have a new Splinter Cell listed somewhere. Um, Rage 2, which isn't that surprising, but it is kind of a little bit surprising that Rage is getting a sequel. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it, yeah. They have Doom. 
And it's like, why not just the one that people really like? Just do that one. Make a well, sequel. Uh, <laughs> like, Rage was really, really, like, Rage started out, like, great Mad Max atmosphere and everything like yeah. that. And Open then they just, like, stuff, yeah. yeah, they gave you a really powerful gun at the end and walked you down a bunch of hallways. And it was like, well, this sucks. <laughs> it, it's because it's it's Rage 2, Battle Rage, Battle mm. Rage Out. Or something. Rage. That, what do you think the like, chances are of Rage 2 being either an open world survival game or a Battle Royale game? pretty good yes <laughs> or both yeah pretty good <laughs> yeah um gears of war 5 which hasn't officially been announced but i think everyone knew that was going to happen at some point just cause for uh lego dc villain villains 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 there's which... there there's like if you wake up tomorrow there'll be another lego game announced that yeah. you don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's so many yeah yeah, I don't think so. Some of these aren't really that surprising. I'm super stoked for the idea of a new Splinter Cell, though, because it has been a long time since the last Splinter Cell game. Mm-hmm. And the multiplayer in Splinter Cell, the sort of 2v2 multiplayer that they ended up with, I think they started it in Pandora Tomorrow, which was a stupid name for a video game, but um, they started it in that. Like, that was actually really, really fun, where you had two like security guards who had like all these like cameras and stuff around that were helping them out, trying to find the two spies who had all the spy equipment and stuff. Um, and it was, it was moderately well balanced. It was a little bit leaning in favor of the spies, but that's, it's a spy game. That's kind of the point. Um, but it was pretty fun. And, um, I'm, I'm excited for the idea of a new Splinter Cell game personally. Division two. Division two. Yep. Um, I mean, a lot of these were already announced. So like we, we've yeah. known for a while that there's a division two on the way, but this kind of indicates <clears throat> that maybe the, like maybe Walmart knows there's going to be some juicy details on division two at E3. Um, Beyond Good and Evil 2, Last of Us 2, and Final Fantasy 7 remake. What about that Metroid Prime for you? Yeah. Uh, like, it's, oh, yeah. It's, where the hell is Metroid that? Metroid Prime 4. Where's my, uh, where's it my was, Metroid game? Uh, in the tweet, in the, actual, in the original tweet, uh, there's there's a, a couple more things in there. Okay. Yeah, this is this is, this is is a smaller screenshot of what I originally saw. There's a much bigger In the article screenshot. on the Wario 64, that, that, that text will take you to the actual tweet. Okay. We'll yeah. And uh, like I'm, th- there is the 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 Metroid in there, which oh, is yeah, cool. Is. Uh, the Insurgency Sandstorm, like we have it. It's been a while since Insurgency. Uh, I want to know what Dreams is though, and like who, who's that being published by? Like we, you know, we know nothing about that. Mm. Yeah, that's just a blank. Like that could be. I mean, that could be like an indie game. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. A lot of these are triple A, so I think Dreams would be triple A too. Actually, you all would, of them are triple A. You would think, but when's the last time triple A went and made an original IP? <laughs> 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 like the odds are kind of against that. Uh, that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be. It could be. Yeah, it could be um, Warframe two or something. I don't know. Dreams <laughs> actually. Is- <laughs> dreams is the if mm-hmm. that is the case dreams is the only actual original ip on this entire screenshot uh e- yep that's right hmm. the video wow. game industry everyone <laughs> <laughs> a single screenshot everyone's like "Ooh, what's dreams <laughs> the one thing that's not, well, original, the, not i think the problem is that Guns is the only one who is like, ooh, what's dreams? Everyone else is like, ooh, more Splinter Cell, <laughs> Metroid, or whatever. <laughs> well, it's like I I know what to expect with the rest of the yeah. stuff. It's like you know, it's yeah, Borderlands Three and Division and blah blah blah. It's like I don't know what that is. I want that. Give me that. Yeah. No, it makes sense. It's like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Rip. Dreams. Middle of June yeah. next month, right? June twelfth, thirteenth, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, just, you know, continuing to prove that the video game industry needs to move on from brick and mortar and uh, go to purely <laughs> distri- digital distribution. Because uh, the problem is that you have to tell stores in advance when you're going to release something well in advance so they can prepare for it. And then they end up posting it on their website. Um, so good job, Walmart. Uh, Walmart Canada. Thanks. Thanks for holding it down, Walmart Canada. <laughs> we really appreciate Did it. Did you... <laughs> Did you see Bethesda's reply to this leak? No, I didn't. Bethesda's oh, yeah. PR reply was, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> <laughs> and they also got upset at the the fact that it wasn't all caps. And it was like just proper case, upper, uppercase R, and then A-G-E. They oh. said something like that. They were like, no, it's supposed to be all caps, wrong font. 
<laughs> Why don't you leak things properly? I know. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, one thing that isn't directly related to this, but I think it's probably worth mentioning at this point, is um, we also found out that um, Nintendo Switch is finally... So when Nintendo Switch Online comes out, which they've been sort of threatening slash promising for a while that eventually they'll roll out their actual official online service that you'll have to pay for, similar to Xbox Live, uh, PS Plus, etc. Um, but once that's actually out, the Switch will finally have freaking cloud saves. Freaking yeah. cloud saves. I'm, I think I'm more excited about that than I am all the rest of the features. Just because, like... I don't know. I'm always terrified of can't save anything right now. Yeah, I'm always terrified <laughs> that I'm going to like accidentally brick my switch or something and lose like all of my Breath of the Wild playthrough or all of my <laughs> Splatoon everything and so on. So I still don't have a switch and like cloud saves was one of the reasons because everything was on an SSD and it was like, well, what if I inevitably break my handheld device, which will happen? Then I'm like, that's, you know, so cloud saves and like actual online, especially like the actual online service part, especially if Nintendo manages to do online without having like a 27 digit fucking code that I have to oh remember and God. give to my friends <laughs> my friend just so ideas. we can play together. Yeah. Four yeah. social security numbers in one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> Please let me just have, I don't even care if it ends up having to be like Devil Lord 269 or whatever. Like, just give me the ability to have something that isn't a fucking random ass number yeah jesus friend codes yeah jesus. the um and then there's that yeah the part about the smartphone app right the smartphone app that's supposed to be the way that you could do so first like off voice chat and shit yeah yeah they're they're bringing back a handful of of uh old nes games um and the list the list of nes games is kind of like eh, it's, it's all right there's no capcom or anything on here so it's kind of you're missing out on a couple good games but this is just 10 out of the 20 that they leaked to us. Soccer, tennis, Donkey Kong, Mario, Super Mario, Balloon Fight, Ice Climber, Dr. Mario, Legend of Zelda, and Super Mario Bros. 3. Really, the only notable games in there that you'd probably even play more than once again is Dr. Mario, Legend of Zelda, and Super Mario Bros. 3. The rest are throwaway games. The original games, Mario Brothers, but come on, it's, like, it's the original Mario Brothers before <laughs> the Super. Like, yeah. it's, it's like the Donkey Kong version. Yeah. Um, We're talking about... Tennis, we're talking about games that are old enough that they were able to legally name it tennis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. The only, the only like game named after the actual sport that's good is uh, hockey. Like, like NES hockey is super fucking good. <laughs> like, it's so good. But that's pretty much it. Um, so, so yeah, they, they basically make it so that you can play these things over their online service uh, multiplayer, which is interesting. It's really interesting because a lot there wasn't a whole lot. Hey, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, of simultaneous multiplayer back then, except for like action games like Contra or Smash TV or whatever. Um, all these games, well, the ones that sport multiplayer, uh, like Super Mario Bros. Three, for example, that's taking turns. So, are you gonna like take turns with somebody that that is like? Not like online, like, I don't, I, that part I don't quite get. Yeah, you know, says, maybe play with your friends or something, but good. Nintendo said in their announcement, um, quote unquote, friends can even play, uh, watch each other play single player games online and pass the controller <laughs> at any time. So I'm assuming that means that there's like some sort of button that you push. Like, obviously, these games, the Switch has like 12 more buttons than the original NES had. So maybe it's like press Y to give the controller to the other guy that you're playing with or something. Right. But yeah, you're right. The you wanna, of this was just like back and forth. Like you don't even need two controllers for this half the time. They, they want to give you that shitty nostalgia feeling of being the best friend that gets the crappy Mad Cats controller when you come over <laughs> to your friend's house. <laughs> Why was that on the go? Thing? Like even up to the, the Xbox. Subway. Like I still have my original Xbox floating around somewhere. And... There were three different colors of official controllers. So if you had, if you wanted to use all four controller ports on the thing, you had to either have one controller that was the shitty giant one, two controllers that were the same color. Oh, the original, yeah. The, it was yeah. like it was like a giant, it's like yeah. massive. It was like a console. You could murder somebody with it, yeah. You could, someone probably has. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Or you had to go and get like a, a shitty third party one and be like, well, I couldn't find, there wasn't a orange one, so I had to buy this weird orange one. Why was, I don't know why that was always a thing. It Come was, it was it. either like this bright candy orange or red, and it was like smaller than your actual hand. The Mad yeah. Cats controllers were well, always was, so small. Yeah. <laughs> that was, but that was back when we were still trying to figure controllers out. Like, it's not really until recently, yeah. or not recently, but like probably what, Xbox 360, that was finally like, okay. Now we got it, you know, like the the sort Xbox of. 360. Well, like, well, <laughs> you know, you know, think so. Like the Xbox 360, well, the Xbox One, the 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 Switch controller is basically the same layout, basically the same yeah. thing. So, like the the PS4 controller, I think is still. I still think this is the best controller. I like this is my favorite controller to hold. Um, <sighs> it's my favorite controller mm. to hold, and I prefer. Yeah. So here's here's. I mean, you're wrong, but yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Fine. So I prefer <laughs> this layout right here. I prefer the stick. That I have to put my thumb down a little bit more and the D-pad up to the left rather than on the uh, yeah. I keep yeah. all my controllers right next to me for this reason and not because I'm too lazy to put them away. Rather than uh, the Xbox One setup where you have like your two thumbs at weird <laughs> angles, the yeah. as the asymmetry of that just pisses me off. Um, huh. And the other side of it is. Ah, shit, my Switch Pro controller is actually in the living room. I can't, I can't pull that one out right now. Um, but the the A B X Y that Nintendo and Xbox can't agree oh on. God, I know that drives I me know. nuts. It drives me insane. <sighs> play this for a while, and it's like confirm button, you know, and then yeah, it's like yeah. okay, and then play the other one for a while, and that's the confirm button. And it's yeah. just like you keep on getting them switched up. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Just agree on that, please. But anyway, uh, Nintendo Switch Online launching in September. Um, which is somehow not that far away. This year has evaporated. Um, it's already freaking May. I don't know how that's happened. Holy crap, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just had like a mini anxiety attack. Thanks. Yeah, I keep like, I keep like still like signing things 2017. Like normally I'm done with that by like February. I've gotten over <laughs> like signing the wrong number in <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, February, yeah. but no, it's still happening. Um, so moving along, uh, this is just, this is just kind of freaky. Um, this next one, it's really, really cool, but it's also kind of freaky. So Google has been, as we know, like they've been working on some really deep learning AI sort of stuff. Like, um, they call it, uh, what was it? They called it, it started with a D, um, duplex duplex. Yeah. Um, they've been working on this AI stuff for a while, um, with things like Google home tying into it, uh, and Google assistant. And they've gotten to the point now where Google Assistant is, well, okay, so it, they've gotten to the point where you can pull out your phone, uh, or will be able to, I don't think it's actually available yet, but pull out your phone, say Google Assistant, um, call some company and book this thing for me, and it will actually have a conversation with a person on the other end. And it does it in such a freaky, like, realistic sort of way. I'm actually just going to go ahead and play the video here. Yeah. Um, I've got it. Got it paused over here. Because this is this is freaky. Um, why can I not hear this? Oh, because I turned this down. Here we go. Hey, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the seventh. So that is an AI talking. For yeah. seven people. That's a person. Um, it's got four people. Out. Four people when? Um, next Wednesday at six p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like upper like uh, five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Yep. Bye bye. So obviously, um, there's a couple things that it doesn't quite do exactly right in there. Um, like doesn't do perfectly. Like there's a couple, yeah. there's a point where you can sort of hear it doesn't quite flex properly into like, it doesn't quite string its sentences together correctly, correctly. So you hear it like suddenly just cut in with a, ah, uh, out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and at the end it sounds super disappointed when normally it would be like, oh yeah, sure. No, fine. That's, that's fine. <laughs> um, but the fact that it was able to call up a restaurant and not just go, please make a reservation for this time. And when they're like, <laughs> no, it's like, Click. no, it was actually able but, to respond to the fact that 
They called up this restaurant. The restaurant was like, we don't take reservations for that many people. And then it just sort of went, oh, okay. Um, how long is the wait time usually? And just like actually flexed into the sort of thing that you would want. If you, if I, if I asked you, Mike, to call somebody up and be like, hey, can you do this? I would expect you to then be like, oh, yeah. So what, what are these follow-up questions, et cetera? Like, yeah. It's creepy. It's and cool, I would sound just like that. Even if I had all the information on hand, I would still squeeze in an um or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like as I'm just kind of like getting the information queued up to get out of my mouth. Like that's what it sounded like. And so hearing that, like it was funny. Like, it, I was I was expecting to hear a robot, right? Like, yeah. And there's like, like you said, there's certain parts. And in the first call as well, You're expecting call. Siri basically. Yeah, I'm expecting Siri or yeah, it, it, but. The way that it squeezed in, like the couple of like ums, uh, okay, gotcha, I uh, gotcha, thanks. Yeah, like yeah. what the fuck? Like it was it so good. It, it 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 so it uses that. It's still machine learning, but like if you were talking to it, would you know that that's a robot without being told? <clears throat> no, I I think it's clear that the people on the other end of these calls, like they they did actual calls. These were like yeah, legitimate. Uh, there's a whole presentation you can find it. Um, the article we were just looking at is on Mashable. But there's a whole presentation that they gave and they're actually walking through like these are actual legitimate phone calls that were made by an AI to a company uh, to do this. So so it uses the, the, the thing is when it's speaking and the, the inclination that uses like the um and the oh yeah and the guy all that it's using that for thinking time and processing time which is really really smart on how they programmed it and it's like holy shit did Google just pass the Turing test? Yeah. Not quite but like it's really close. <laughs> I think I think if we didn't already know going into watching that that it was an AI, then it would 100% have passed the Turing test. In yeah, fact, true. I think I think it probably like it's, it's some good <clears throat> evidence that it. So that um for people who may not be aware, the Turing test was set up by a guy called Alan Turing. Um, it's the idea. I'm really into this sort of stuff. So, uh, it's the <laughs> idea that an AI um who passes the 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 test is. Can the AI talk to a person without the person realizing that they're talking to an AI? And there's been all sorts of text-based things that have gotten close to, if not actually passing the Turing test uh, previously. There were like chess robots that were able to do it and stuff like that. Um, but this is the first that we've really seen something using speech to actually pass the, pass the Turing test. And that's crazy because it's now sort of getting to the point where it's blurring the line between like... Maybe Shizzle actually is a weird AI construct. <laughs> like, I've never seen him. So. <laughs> He's just ahead of the curve, man. Yeah, He's been should. ahead of the curve. He's an we experiment that, that Google's been running show. for several years. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it's, it's so crystal clear, too. Mm. And here's the thing, like, especially on the phone, in a restaurant or wherever these people are, right? A salon was the first call. A salon, like, it's not quiet in there. And also you're on a phone. So some of those little, like, those little intricacies that are kind of missed where it's kind of, it's like, it sounds like a bad reality show interview edit where the audio is kind of like mashed up from different sentences, right? Just for like a brief moment. That could easily pass off as bad connection, right? Or like yeah. something, a you know, headset pop or whatever, or there's just lots of noise. So, so for this purpose of calling a business, uh to do things that totally works it's funny I, i'm like oh man i need i've been needing to get my uh, an oil change in my car for the past like six months when can this thing come out so i can use it because i'm never gonna schedule this shit myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm 100 percent the same way like trying to set an eye appointment for me is mm -hmm. like and it's it's an eye appointment it's the most painless thing that i will ever experience in my entire life i sit in a comfy chair and look at stuff and go a b G, for a little while yeah x <laughs> um but it's like actually making one is such a i'm just so freaking lazy um that i i'm like no i'm just gonna sit at my desk and work through the day ah uh, shit i missed i missed my time to call today now i'm gonna have to do it tomorrow whoops i forgot again tomorrow because i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm bad at this sort of thing so every time I drive like, my car, every day I drive my car now, it's just yeah. like, is, is that a new, is that a new feel? Is that a new feel? Is that a bad feel? Is that a new feel? Am I just feeling things? Probably just feeling things. Well, fine. <laughs> the check engine like, light's been on for a while, but has it been on for too long? <laughs> <laughs> Does it get brighter as time goes on? It feels like it's brighter today than it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Now, obviously, if you were to attempt to, if, if it were to call up some, some company, I'm assuming, if it were to call up some company and be like, Hey, I'd like to make a reservation. And the person on the other end was like, okay, yeah. By the way, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? The thing would probably, I don't think it would be able to deal with that. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I, I don't know, man. They've, they've thrown it some curveballs in there. If you watch the whole presentation, like they mm. throw it some pretty hard, like, 
and it responds accurately and it's it's smart too so like if you make a hair appointment within like a frequency of like three months you make it like once a month it learns and it's like okay i'm gonna go ahead and call his uh, hair appointment person and make it for him and then tell him later on hey you have a hair appointment at and it's like okay oh, that's man it's so awesome yeah. it's getting there right it's like it's... Shh, you mean i have to do nothing that's amazing. yeah as soon as we get to the point where they start and it, like they've they've laid the most important groundwork at this point i think um now we're just getting on to the point where like okay now we need ais that start to learn opinions um and as soon as it starts to have opinions that's when we're just making people like pretty much yeah like i was i was kind of talking about this on twitter the other day it's kind of crazy but like the idea of we're getting so close to the point where you can't tell that it's not a person. And when you can't tell that it's not a person, like what, at what point does it just, does your interaction with this thing become so person like that it doesn't even matter if they're human or not? It's just a, a friend that you talk to sometimes that also happens to be your personal assistant and or may kill you in the future. You know what the alternative good thing about this is? All those crazy people that always want to talk nonstop don't have to ever deal with them again. Uh, yeah. 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 Just uh, <laughs> Google Assistant. Why have you been on the phone for three hours? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's so yeah. here's the can we can we play the tinfoil hat terrifying side of this for just a second? Oh, God. Because I right, foil. No, but here's the thing when so here's what's concerning about ai and people like elon musk have talked about this as well so i'm not just entirely pulling this out of my ass sure. but the the scary thing about ai <laughs> isn't that they're going to be evil and try to kill us like we're not going to get a terminator sort of situation where they're like all humans must be exterminated for reasons um the concern is that they won't care what happens to us like the concern is that it will become apparent to them that we are not relevant to their continued existence. And so they just won't worry about what they're doing, whether or not it affects us or not or not the same way that when someone makes a parking lot, they don't worry about whether or not they're going to kill a colony of ants in the process. So yep. that's the sort of like, OK, this is really cool, but also. Uh, maybe I just won't have kids. <laughs> 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 no it's yeah that, it, it's a pretty valid point you know there's there's tons of like random sci-fi shows about ai is doing something you know in various forms or capacities or yeah or whatever um but yeah i like i like that one though i like that because it makes it makes a lot of sense it's like it's like the whole like third dimension, fourth dimension, big people who exist in one dimension that you could like the next dimension up, like they you're basically nothing to them. Like you couldn't even fathom what they, you know, and also like the the uh the mental capacity that we have versus like uh versus like a monkey or something. It's like that's that's how another alien race might view us. <laughs> like we yeah. might be that stupid to or that whatever, it, it just incoherent compared to you know what they're capable of what their thought line process is so yeah yeah it's 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 scary <laughs> even our smartest person might still be a complete fucking idiot basically, basically you guys don't know third dimensional warp trans effects <laughs> when they're in the fifth grade <laughs> basically basically we're um we're playing ourselves into the entire mass effect plot except instead of the humans in mass effect we're the quarians oh jesus christ and we're gonna make ai that's gonna kick us off of our planet and we're yep. just going to have to go live among the stars in our spacesuits and um uh eventually there will be a sequel. I don't know where I was going with that. Um <laughs> Yeah, no. Relative disappointing end. Relatively Aww. disappointing end, yeah, to humanity. Yep. And then one day we'll be people and synthetics. <laughs> hey, that was your choice. There was a choice. I think it technically yeah. became the canonical ending. <clears throat> oh, did that become the the thing? I think so, but I don't I don't remember. Does it sure. matter? I don't think they're doing anything with that franchise anymore. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Either. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> there may have been some like after novels or something. I'm not sure. Andromeda sunk that shit pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, but think about it this way. Um, eventually we'll uh, uh, eventually we'll discover the Asari. So that'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anyway, so speaking of um, space and the future and aliens, kind of, uh, Destiny 2, also rogue AIs, actually. Destiny 2 Ooh. came out with a, uh, a new DLC. They came out their Warmind DLC. I have not played it or really paid any attention to it. Have either of you? Um, yeah, like <laughs> maybe 40 hours or so already since okay. Tuesday. Okay. So I'm kind of knee deep in it at the moment. How is it? Uh, I kind of regret <laughs> being knee deep in it at the moment. Oh, no. Well, I mean, you're 40 hours in. Like, are you... That that's if you're forty hours of like riveting content, then great. If it's forty hours of s standing in Orgrimmar and like fucking spamming chat, like that kind of entertainment, then yeah, that's different. Like, put it this way, it's kind of <laughs> like you know how you can't look away from train wrecks. Well, in this case, I'm riding the train, so it doesn't matter. I'm just I'm in it, right? Uh, it's like they couldn't. So Destiny Two launches, right? And mm. it's got a coherent story, but it has no real end game. And then Curse of Osiris doesn't really have in-game or a coherent story. And now Warmind, it has good in-game content, but it has no coherent story worth it. Worth yeah. a crap. Like they 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 it pissed me off so bad, like playing through it because and that's pretty frequently for me, but <laughs> <laughs> no. they they like actively you can go back and compare dialogue lines of Zavala of Vuzela from like Destiny One to Destiny Two, and he's like actively contradicting himself, yeah. and it's just like this is <laughs> stupid. If you're gonna, if you're going to write yourself into a narrative plot hole, sleep in your bed and work with that narrative plot hole. Don't don't just retcon everything like you've been doing for the last year, Bungie. It's really annoying. I don't know uh. what what sort of game would retcon storyline. That's just oh man. <sighs> no, it should never do that. No, that's, that's, there has never been a franchise that I would work for that would retcon storyline. <laughs> Man, that, that would just kill your game. With that. Just, no, but like you, at least you guys create up like some dumbass excuse, like oh, another portal, and then it goes back in time. <laughs> <laughs> another portal. That's that's a, that's a good. I like that. It's, <laughs> yeah, Bungie's just like, uh, yeah, well, it's not real. You managed to sound uh, exactly like a uh, like Warcraft three peon when you said that. Another <laughs> portal. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Cadgar, another portal. Oh <laughs> uh, Jesus. Oh no. I'm so well, yeah. I'm there, so disappointed because I I asked on Twitter earlier too. Like, hey everyone, what's uh, what are, what are your thoughts on? And there were there were definitely people that, that that spoke up and said they were they were enjoying the Destiny Two DLC. Um, but it was mostly exactly what you were just saying, Guns. Um, that it's a little yeah. bit disappointing in terms of the story. I'm I'm sad to hear that because I was super excited for a War Mine thing because the War Mine is probably the most intriguing part of Destiny lore to me. If you couldn't tell from the well, previous topic, I'm actually really into uh, AIs. So, so you would actually really like that then, because Rasputin's the one thing they got right. Oh, like okay. it's it's the it is the one thing they had. I mean, spoilers. You're not going to play it anyway. Um, <laughs> I might. Jesus. No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, no okay. spoilers for people at home. No spoilers. No spoilers. No yeah. spoilers. But but there's a moment at the end which is really just around Rasputin. And they get it right. Like, they okay. get it right. It's the one thing they do get right. And it, you're just like, he's really fucking cool now. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I'll have to play. I, I'm pretty sure I have it anyway. I'm pretty sure I I, I work for yeah. Activision. So I'm pretty sure I yeah, have it. Yeah, and he... So. There, there's... I mean, like, the, the story just in general, like, it's just like Luster. Uh, but there is in-game content there. Like, there's a bunch of stuff for you to go do. Um, and there's, we're really, really confident. Like if you go look in raid secrets and you go look in like Chisel's discord, we're really confident. There's a secret out there. Like there's so many like nooks and crannies of stuff. Like, um, there's a, a braille code on like six different boxes that translates into a cipher for Sun Tzu's art of war that puts in like the six step process like it, yeah, it just goes and goes and goes. The rabbit holes back, and everybody's spin foil hats back on. So we're pretty confident there's a mystery nobody solved, and 
As long as you get people to ask the question like, but maybe there is. Yeah. Then everybody will keep playing. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of um like it's one of those things that if there is some seriously good content locked behind this secret, that's a really dumb way to use those resources. <laughs> like <laughs> give people the actual content, don't be like there's a whole game in there. Like maybe maybe that's the entire problem with Destiny 2 is that there's a whole extra game that nobody's found yet. <laughs> Everyone's oh, just been playing it wrong the entire time. But like 10 years from now, some developers or some writers going to be like, yeah, you guys never found this 400 <laughs> hours worth of content, story content. Yeah. Well, you're do you remember like in Destiny 1 uh, Rise of Iron, the there was a, a secret in the raid for the exotic weapon from the raid uh, called Outbreak Prime. It took the Internet collectively two weeks to figure that out when it takes the Internet <laughs> two weeks to figure something out. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap, you know, yeah. so we're kind of hoping it's another one of those because that was really cool and really fun to be on that trip. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, WoW has had some secrets that have taken longer than that to figure out, but even then it's always been um, it's been figured out pretty quickly once once they catch that first breadcrumb. It's been pretty quick. Yeah, they're able to they're able to actually solve it. I don't know. I'm just I'm super disappointed to see that Destiny is still having issues because like. I got really, really into Destiny during the Taken King. Like, that was the point where, yep. like, I had three characters. I was running the raid three times every yeah. week. I was really getting into it, and it was so good. And I just feel like, like, I don't know. Lots of people I tell mean, me I this mean, about the WoW all the time, Destiny too. The show Destiny Get Your Hopes Up, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't get your <laughs> yeah. ghost up. Yeah, don't get your ghost up. It's like yeah. all we talk uh, about. I but mean, to like, be honest, mm. a, a $20 DLC was never going to fix the game. Um... And sure, a well, lot of the kind of, uh, oh, yeah, I guess yeah, a, a lot of the um the big community members like the recognizable ones like King Athalian and Broman and Datto that went to the summit like a couple weeks ago, they said that this DLC really does nothing for the game or the franchise, but they all said that they are really excited for September and that it's actually getting back to when Destiny was good, which is I'm assuming is Taken King. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like so that's... Destiny 2 year 3 is the year 3 like is that their thing? <laughs> is that like they just, they just wait until <laughs> I mean Taken King was year 2, but yeah. Oh yeah, this no, is year 2 mean... for Destiny 2 as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, but year 3 is when things got really tight though. That's when they got things kind of locked down and the game yeah. actually became pretty solid. Basically, yeah. yeah. I, just, I don't know. It was like when Destiny 2 came out, like for a long time it was it was really really fun. I was playing it a lot. I got to max level and I was like, "Okay, this is kind of neat." And eh, raid was a little bit disappointing, but at least the end boss was fun and cool that was destiny and then i just kind of stopped playing and yeah. I, ever since then i've been like i just want to go give them a copy of their own game and say hey remember when we made this do that <laughs> that this yeah, was right? good. formula was working remember here. when we we never ran out of anything to do yeah and it was fun no, it was a lot of people like and it was weird that first like month of playing Destiny 2 because all of us people that took a week off of work and played for like 100 hours were like, no, it's really crappy. Stop playing the game like you get to the end <laughs> and it does suck, guys. And everyone else is like, no, no, I'm enjoying it. It's great. And it's like, yeah, you play like two hours a day. Yet. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just haven't gotten to the it, point that I've gotten to yet. Yeah yeah and so it was really weird there was like a whole this this big line in the community where everyone's like it's terrible it's great it's terrible it's great <laughs> yeah so hopefully um whatever's coming in september will uh revitalize destiny that game comet destiny you, comet Walmart. yeah <laughs> hopefully that'll uh that'll revitalize it for us is destiny going to be one of those games that we just like are we just going to wait because there's going to be a destiny 4 like that's gotten out there so are we just going to wait for like a year after every Destiny? Like, you know, Destiny 3 is 2022, but you're not going to buy it till 2023. <laughs> Destiny 4 is like 2027, but you're not going to buy it till like 2044. You just wait, and then it'll eventually it'll be good. Yeah. Not on release, though. <clears throat> I mean, I just want them to do a movie with like these characters, Zavala, with Nathan Fillion. With, I mean, I want them to have these characters and just make a fucking movie. I, I, I feel like I mean, that that I would be okay with that. They have a really good cast. They have a great cast. All their cutscenes are and all their like promo stuff is just so good. Mm -hmm. uh, They're really even, good like, in game. In even game yeah. banter between them is super good. Like, they're they're and these are act. Sorry, good. 
I was gonna say they're they're so good at like you can tell when you're going through the single player stuff you can tell it's Bungie especially like the the longer campaigns the uh, the biggest complaint about the um the DLC campaign I've heard is that it's short um yeah but it's usually pretty good and they're they're really really good at especially when they're building new environments and stuff creating these awesome cinematic moments that make you really feel like holy shit I'm being surrounded by this thing that's going on like remember um when Taken King first came out. And you had that first mission where the Taken were attacking that like outpost, and you're running around. You're like, "Holy shit, Bungie is back! They remembered how to make Halo, and now they're making it in Destiny." Oh, yeah. That was really good. And like the um, uh, one of the the final missions in um Destiny Two, uh, the original campaign, where you're like getting shot up through the like um, uh, I forget exactly what it was, the like fuel intake thing in the like giant uh, ship. Oh at yeah. The end. Yeah. The the Almighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up in Uh and yeah, you it like opens up and you're like you're surrounded by this plasma jet and you can look out and you can see the sun through this tube and you're yeah. like, Holy shit, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. Like they're really, really good at the storytelling. I just wish they would go back to when they were really good at endgame also. Like even yeah. Prison of well, Elders. And- like I, I enjoyed Prison of Elders. Sure, it was kind of mindless there, and kind well, of grindy, but it was still fun. There's there's something like Prison of Elders. Like I said, this DLC does bring the in-game content. Like okay. there's Escalation Protocol, which has it was like is really freaking hard right now. Um, just because nobody can or oh, they also slowed down light progression too. So mm. like grinding my ass off and going through multiple characters of raids, I'm only 360 out of 385. And like ah, uh, that's it. I'm not gonna go any further this week. I can't. And like next week, I might hit 365. It's gonna take me a couple weeks to get to 385, like legitimately hard. Um, so they've slowed it down considerably. <laughs> I love. And, uh, I love when the complaint about a game is, "Please stop giving me loot so much." <clears throat> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Slow down. Ooh. You're gearing me up too fast. <laughs> <laughs> But that was definitely the problem I had with the with Destiny Two when it launched. Is like I got fully geared in like a couple of raids, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I don't." And then you just collect. I don't want to play collect this anymore. Pieces of gear. That's all you do is you just yeah. collect different armor pieces after that, yeah, and it's not fun. Yeah. No, they've. It's it, you're still just. It's still just a collectathon, but it's a slower collectathon right now. Hmm. That's something anyway. Like if it's gonna be a collectathon, it needs to be like a Diablo three style collectathon where. You're just farming and farming and farming and farming, and you enjoy the farming to a certain degree, but you're mostly just farming. Um, yeah. When it's a collectathon that you're done with in a week, then it's just like, all right, well, that was pointless. <laughs> Which the the new raid launches tomorrow, raid layer. Oh. Um, man, I was doing air quotes if you couldn't see. It sounded like it. it sounded like air quotes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the the new raid layer comes out tomorrow, so. People are kind of hoping that that's worth the wait. Probably not. Hmm. So when you, when you say raid layer. So it's the new thing that they're doing, and I like it, but essentially, like, take a raid that Blizzard would do and cut it. Uh, t- take ICC, okay? Right. And then cut it into the lower half, the upper half, or the lower half, the middle half, and the upper half. Okay. D- basically, that's it. So, like, the beginning season or whatever they released the lower half and then the the second dlc they released the middle part and then the last dlc of the their three dlcs in a year they released the ending of the whole raid layer oh so this is all break it up into wings this is all still on the leviathan then yeah this is all still callous for all we know he's like captain beef curtains is up there looking like job of the hut um I've only ever heard one other thing called beef curtains. <laughs> Just so you know. What does he look like to you? It's he's terrifying. No, he doesn't look like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. They're pretty saggy. He's pretty saggy. Uh, 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 all right. Well, that was guns on the show. Thanks so much, everybody, for <laughs> thanks for guys. being Just, here. No um, wait. Um, no. <laughs> hey, what? Uh, oh man. <laughs> I'm so glad that I just had that scene handy. To just yeah. do that. <laughs> was that like the emergency bug out button? It's like it's the, it's the ejection seat is what it is. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so yeah, Destiny Two has a thing out. Um, it sounds like Destiny Two. I'll I'll check it out at some point. Um, uh, just because I am 
super interested in Rasputin. And if you're saying that they did Rasputin pretty well, I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you have it, it's worth looking at. If you don't, yeah. it's not. Okay. Cool. Um, another game that may be worth checking out that just came out of early access is uh, Conan Exiles. Um, I got to uh, I got to do a sponsored stream. I got to do my very first ever sponsored stream for, oh. uh, for Conan Exiles the other day. Wow. Nice. Um, Fancy. And fortunately, I actually liked the game because if I didn't, that would have been really awkward. Um, <laughs> uh, but did you get to play at the dick slider? I the, part of the requirements for the sponsored stream were to have the nudity filter on. So uh, and also like what? just for Twitch in general, like, please don't st please don't stream Conan Exiles with a nud nudity filter off. What is wrong with you? Like, yeah, have they dicks never flapping seen around? like. Game of Thrones, like dicks and tits sell, man. It's, like Westworld, Game of well, Thrones. That's you know? why. That's why they have the dick slider in the game in the first place, because <laughs> they're like, we want to be the first game to have full frontal nudity with a fucking endowment. It's literally called endowment slider, so yeah. you can make your. And of course, everybody just always cranks that thing up because who's gonna crank that slider down? Um, <laughs> Like, no, my character has a Dude. tiny penis. Just fucking <laughs> micro penis. That's my character. I don't know if I want to meet that person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is aside that that aside, I'd actually forgotten about that. That aside, I did actually enjoy the game. Um I had never played it and did you you played it during early access, didn't you, Guns? Yeah. So like I played it when it first came out, like the day it came out. And uh it was really cool, um, but it had – one of the main reasons why you play those games is, like, generally, if you have friends, you don't play it by yourself, right? You go yeah. play on official servers or you go play on a custom server or whatever, right? And when it first came out, the lag was – it was like a stutter mm. step, like, every other second. It was horrendous, and the combat was just, like – left it was like minecraft like swing swing that was it you know there was nothing mm. to it and um so we put that down. better though better than arc is what i've been told yeah yeah and we played we've played a lot of arc like i have a crap ton of unnecessary hours into arc that i want to <laughs> regret um and uh it the combat is so much better like there's combos light and heavy attacks um and they've added a ton to the biomes they've added a ton to the actual uh crafting systems um it's just way more in depth now um and uh it i i haven't like actually gotten to this update but i've read everything and i've watched a bunch of videos and i really want to get back into it because it looks interesting i always enjoy these build them up survival aspect games it's just that they get really shallow once you get into the end game of it. And this looks like there is more to do there. Yeah, kind of. Um, so I've, I've played a lot of Ark as well. I've got 235 hours into it, which isn't a, a ton, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, but it's still 235 hours. That's significant. Um, yeah. That's I've, I've always played Ark on RP servers, though, and I've always felt like the RP was a very important aspect of it to me because the game would have been really flat without that extra like sort of political intrigue that comes up from being on a being on an RP <laughs> server. Like if I yeah, couldn't be is. if I was playing Ark and I couldn't be a dickhead preacher who was just manipulating everyone, I don't think I would have enjoyed Ark at all. Um it's laggy, it's slow, um taming sucks in every game that's ever had taming. It's never fun. Um it's really bad in Ark. I cannot fucking stand the taming in Ark. It's so bad. <laughs> Which I mean <laughs> I guess that kind of speaks to like the people that I play with in our attention span as a group because mm. we didn't play on RP servers. And so like, yeah, it does get really boring and we'd sit there and babysit a dinosaur for three fucking hours because it was level 97. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get into this shit where it's like, and now I've found an egg for a Drake. And so I have to hatch this thing, which means I need to be, incubating it and checking on it and making sure that everything's okay for the next four days constantly checking back in on this thing it's like no just no that's not something i'm ever interested in jesus just yeah. no you reach a point that it becomes like self-hate basically it's yeah job. exactly it's a job um, that i can pay for yeah the conan exiles it has a, a vague form of taming through the thralls but that's like really quick you basically you just 
you drag them to a stone. You say, push this, and that's that's it done. You've you've tamed them at yeah. that point. Um, then, you, then you have a bunch of slaves, and you can make them go do work. And yeah, it's nice. Yeah, they're more like uh, they're more like WoW followers than anything else. Um, yeah, slightly more interactive, fairly more interactive, significantly more interactive. Uh, you know, nothing like WoW followers. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what they laughs> <are>. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did actually I actually have been enjoying it to me Conan Exiles is arc minus everything I hated about arc um, plus a couple of extra things so the it performs much better at least for me um, uh, I have a friend who has not been able to get it to run on her computer at all which is disappointing but um, for some reason my computer I push at least like 100 frames per second most of the time um, and that's playing it on my laptop with a 1070 and like a, a 5400 or something ridiculous in it. It's like the processor isn't great. Mm-hmm. Um, it uh, the combat is really good. Like they've definitely made the combat. I've heard that it was bad before, but it's really, really good now. It feels fluid. Um, it has an instant dodge, which is always important for me. Ooh. I uh, yeah, like uh, the action obviously. aspect. Yeah, exactly. Like it's. It's not Dark Souls combat with the dodge where you have to like really plan out your attacks ahead of time. You can dodge at basically any time. Um, you just have to plan out your stamina instead. Um, that's the more important thing because it does cost a fair amount of uh, stamina to dodge. But um, I've really enjoyed the combat. I've enjoyed the building so far. Um, the harvesting is basically the same as Ark. Um, the, like, it even gets down to like you have to build a table in order to build these further things and so on. Like It's just Ark when it comes down to the building and stuff. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I'm a little worried about the RP potential for it because it's missing emotes entirely. And that to <laughs> me is pretty important. And also the VoIP isn't great. Um, yeah, the VoIP's kind of crappy in it. Yeah. it I, I, the, the thing that I think, and because especially for RP, you just have to build around it differently. Yeah. Uh, minus all the emotes. I think like the big potential for it is like the thrall economy and the unique NPCs that are there uh, for that. Um, I, I just think of the end game of it. Cause like you, you can tame thralls and then you can like make them go work on a Smith for you. So you never yeah. have to forge another piece of metal again. You just tell it what to do and it does it. Um, so I, w- I want them to get to the point where I can tell it to go gather a bunch of stone yeah. <laughs> and it just, you know, auto pass out there and grabs that stuff. Cause uh, those kinds of games, they're always fun when you're doing anything else, but gathering stuff you need to make. And that's like so when you're just building stuff. Yeah. That's so important for longevity of it as well, because it means that, like, yeah, obviously you want to be in a group with a whole bunch of other people, but if you're if you're not or if they're playing at weird times or whatever or you're not uh, someone stops playing like you can just have thralls filling up the the, the gaps that your uh, your um, your teammates or whatever would be uh, would be doing otherwise. Um, I don't know. I I definitely think it's a it's a it's a fun game. Um, I'm just worried about the like I said, worried about the RP potential of it for me personally. Um it's kind of I was kind of ranting about this on my stream the other day. There's a difference to me between role playing and as role playing, at which point you're basically doing like live action improv acting, um, which is what you tend to get in GTA, where there isn't much game to go along with the role play. You're kind of making everything up as you go. Whereas a big part of the problem that I ended up having with Ark and I'm worried about for Conan Exiles as well is when you're just playing the game with silly voices and that's RP. And you're just like, okay, yes, uh, we're going to play Conan Exiles, and all of my goals are Conan Exiles related. They're not RP related. They're entirely 100% related to I want to get better stuff in Conan Exiles. But I'm Drogvar, the barbarian. Grr. Let's go farm stone. Apparently it does have emotes, which I vaguely remember somebody dancing, but I thought that was about it. So if it has emotes, I cannot fucking find how to use them because I was looking around in the keybinds for ages, um, and I have not ever seen anything that resembles. But still, it I mean, if the local voice sucks, then it sucks. Like that's something they're gonna have to work it's, on. It's it's bad. It's not the worst. It's it's worse than Arc. It's probably better than GTA because it's at least directional. Mm. Is it directional? It might not be directional. I have no idea. I don't remember if it's directional or not. I'm waiting for uh, Stardew Valley RP. Oh, God. That's what I want. 
that's gonna be the shit. But it, it does have workshop support, um, so I'm yeah. sure modding in emotes wouldn't be that hard. Yeah, maybe it's, that's yeah. maybe that's what it is because I know the the server that I'm playing on had a whole bunch of. Oh, you talking about Connex? Oh, I thought I thought it was Tardy Valley, but whatever. Okay, good. Oh. No, 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 no one, no one plays mm -hmm. that game. Uh, <laughs> Listen, you and Shizzle can go get married. Okay, we're yeah, gonna talk about real games. Yet, can we get an update well, on not, whether or not you yeah. and Shizzle have gotten married yet? We're not. Like, was that's, there a prenup or that's, anything? That's the season finale, man. Come on, we're not rushing to that. You're not. You're not rushing into marriage. We're not. We're <laughs> taking our time. But All everyone right. says that we're that apparently we're living a life like we're married somehow. I mean, I every, every, yeah. every, every, every other thing that we that we do, it's like, oh, like a married couple. It's like someone need to go to the mines. What the fuck? Like, is this is this not, the story this, of one man and his AI okay. construct? Yeah. Does Shizzle do like, you know, my, minor things and then you get kind of angry at him and you don't talk to him and then stuff just missing from your house one day. Okay, you well, put that, the you scenes at in the gearbox again. No. Ah. <laughs> That, okay, yes. Yeah, so that part, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I did have to redo all of the everything <laughs> to make it make sense because Shizzle didn't do it right. But I don't blame it on him. Oh, I blame it on his inexperience. Oh, is there just furniture <laughs> missing from your house sometimes? The for yeah, once he learned once he learned how to steal stuff, that's when everything in my house was gone. <laughs> this like, does sound like a marriage. Gosh, I don't think you've seen it, but like his house is separate, right? The houses are separate. My house is the bigger house. It is basically empty. His house is like MTV Cribs, man. Like it is loaded. He's got like two super nice rugs and like all the walls covered with all this stuff. He's got, he used to have two TVs because he fucking stole mine. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so by, because of necessity, I had to steal it back because we couldn't check the weather forecast for the next day because it wasn't synced for the person that's not the host. So he couldn't check it for us. Mm. So I was like, well, I'm sorry. I have to take your, your bed TV shizzle. I need it so we can actually get work done. So yeah, maybe, maybe there's some marriage couple, married couple qualities there, whatever. Hmm. Hmm. So but anyway, fun better than better than this arc game, but Conan arc Conan game. I'm glad you're yeah, having fun. You guys gonna go to therapy? <laughs> Get some couples counseling. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what we need the RP for. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I just feel like he doesn't listen. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so we are uh, we're at time basically, but I did want to make sure to mention this at the very least. Because last week we were talking about the glut of Battle Royale games that's yeah. coming out in 2018. Oh, God. And I guess Scott Hartsman was watching <laughs> because <laughs> this week, <laughs> hang on, I'm just going to I'm just going to show this article here. Let me, let me get, get everything set up here properly. Trove is now coming out with a Bomber Royale mode. Um... I think it should have been called Scott Hartsman's Battlegrounds, but that's just me. Um, it's and it, they say an exciting twist on battle royale gameplay, which it appears to be that it's <laughs> it's in a Minecraft clone and they're you're throwing bombs rather than shooting people. It's um, it's never gonna end, is it? Yeah. No, and that's good though. Ultimately, like yes, there's gonna be a lot of crap, just like all the mobas and just like all the MMOs, but. Uh, occasionally one is going to stand out for whatever reason. They'll have their twist, you know, they'll have their yeah. weird twist. Uh, uh, but like this one, it's like, it's, it looks like, I mean, it just looks like just a, a wild, just colorful mess of just explosions, which yeah. could potentially be fun. Yeah. I mean, battle Royale games are fun. So yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take a trove battle Royale sure. game. Why not? I'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. All right. It is time for us to wrap up for today, but we do have one final article of business to attend to, which is that we need a name for this episode. Uh, so chat room, that one's going to be up to you. We're going to need you guys to suggest names for the episode. This is episode number 13. Uh, we need you to make suggestions for name of the episode in the chat. And we'll pull them up here in just a second. Once the, uh, once the delay passes uh, to start getting a, uh, a look at what we're uh what our suggestions here are which is super low by the way the low delay is super twitch. low yeah mm -hmm. yeah twitch uh rolling out that low latency it's yeah nice. dude it's, it's nice. you, you gotta just 
click that button because it's like super fast for everybody. Yeah, I have to find that button and turn it on. Uh, beef curtains. That's a bad <laughs> suggestion. No, I'm definitely not gonna that, make it. That's, yeah. <laughs> Another portal. <laughs> the Kentucky of guests hosts. I do like another portal. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Endowment uh, slider. That's nice. Oh, that's good. Mm, it's good. Fixing what isn't broke. When did we when did we bring that up? I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Uh, guest host Google Assistant guns. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Google replace guns. Replace I don't, guns. I feel like that's not a suggestion. I think that's just kittens just contributing to the yeah. chat. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it is a suggestion. Endowment slider looking pretty good. Endowment uh, slider, another portal. I like both of those. No me curtains. You guys and your curtains. With <laughs> so what I, I kind of like the Kentucky of guest hosts. That was pretty. I I actually do like the Kentucky of guest hosts. I'm down with that. I, right. I didn't want to like poke fun like like that, but you know, guns. Oh, are yeah. oh, now you didn't want to poke <laughs> fun. Okay, <laughs> I mean, all right. Because it's because, been an yeah, hour of poking this fun. One He's time, over it. It's different okay. when we're in a game and we're bantering. It's it, 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 versus. It's you know, different. Yeah. No one's Just, feelings got hurt this I'm time. I'm fucking nice, okay? <laughs> I can read a map. Damn it! All right, all right. All right. We're gonna go with. He's an engineer. Can't read a map. It's guns. Thank you, Shizzle. <laughs> <laughs> We're going with the Kentucky of guest hosts. The Kentucky of <laughs> guest hosts. Yeah. Perfect. 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 <laughs> Perfect. Perfect indeed. <gasps> uh. Guns, thanks so much for coming on the show, dude. Really appreciate having you here. Not least because we got to make fun of you a whole bunch, which is, you know, one of my favorite things to do. But uh mm -hmm. what do you got what do you got going on? What do you got coming up? Tomorrow is going to be the new raid. We got a team that's going to go in and we're going to try to get world's most recent because we're not good enough to get world first. Um, <laughs> and then after that, we're probably like, you know, we're, we're just been gearing up towards the raid. So after that, I'm probably actually going to play Conan Exiles a bunch next week. Ooh, nice. Nice. Definitely go ahead and check him out. Uh, you can find him on twitch.tv slash guns games. Guns with a Z games. Mike B, a.k.a. AK Mike B, what you got going on? Dude, I'm playing this game. It comes out on the 17th. I got like the key emailed to me. It's called House Flipper. It's basically you get a trash ass house and you have to go in. You have to clean. At first, I was like, this is like made simulator, right? But Ultimately, now it's turned into like interior decorator the game, and it is so Ooh. fucking awesome. Is it? I'm not even kidding. Is it multiplayer? It's not multiplayer. No, it's it's basically like a car mechanic simulator, right? It's just basically like one person. That's the same guys that make car mechanics uh, simulator. Could it be? Uh, it should be multiplayer, so that you could do like RP property brothers. <laughs> I mean, you you could do it with one person, I guess. But yeah. uh, property no, brothers. It probably brother, probably bro. No, it's it's it is actually insanely fun. Like it is, they give you so much stuff to do, and it's just yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's I saw really you good. streaming it earlier. I watched you for like five minutes, but then I had to go to a meeting. So oh, rip, rip. And I've been your host, Josh Allen, aka Devilor. You can find me here on the Twitch, Twitch.tv/Devilor, where I mostly play GTA RP. It's kind of the thing that I do. Um, but occasionally I do other stuff as well. I might poke at some more Conan Exiles on stream. I'm probably going to mostly play that off stream, but we'll see. Uh, thanks again, both of you guys, for hanging out. It's been a uh, fantastic episode. And we will see you guys the next time that we make one of these shows. Yeah. See you.